Real-time analytics. You've probably had your manager ask you to implement some sort of report or dashboard in real time, but honestly, how do we actually have anything near real time? Most people will often just build batch data pipelines, and these don't often give you any form of real time information or real time application abilities, and sometimes you need this. In fact, I recently brought this up in a post, if you follow me on LinkedIn, where it called out the fact that some people, in order to get the closest thing to real time they can, will just directly query on something like MongoDB, and that's not a great idea. So what is the solution when you need to create some sort of real-time application or real-time dashboard that actually gives you access to either real-time clickstream data or real-time user data or real-time information that helps you make decisions that isn't just for some classic executive dashboard? Well, one of the heavily relied upon solutions that exist in the industry that are used by companies like Netflix and Reddit is known as Apache Druid. And in this video, we're gonna talk about Apache Druid, what it is, its architecture, and how companies are using it to actually build and have re access to real-time data. Now, before diving in, hey there guys, my name is Ben Rogajan, aka The Seattle Data Guy. For a quick background on me, if you're new to this channel, I currently work as a data engineering and infrastructure consultant, but prior to this, I worked at Facebook and a data analytics startup, and I love sharing my knowledge of everything that is both data analytics and data infrastructure. So let's dive into talking about Druid. First, let's talk about a brief history of where Druid came from. It started around 2011, started by a company called Metamarkets, which kind of came up in the ad tech boom. For those who might be new to the data world, honestly, one of the big areas that pushed for big data, as exciting as it can be, was ad tech. And if you go back to 2011 and 2012, you'll see that there were a lot of companies trying to figure out how to manage, analyze, process data in real time. And that's what forced Apache Druid to be developed. In the Apache Druid community, you'll likely hear Apache Druid called a real-time analytics DB. And that's really what it focuses on. That's really its bread and butter, where you do have other technical options that I've talked about on this channel. Most of them are generally built for your standard data warehousing approach. They're not as well equipped to handle real-time needs, such as sub-second queries, queries that are happening thousands per second, so not just handling your large queries here and there, but handling possibly thousands that are coming at you, more akin to that of an application versus dashboard, and just in general providing real-time insights, especially if you think about like ad tech, you know, you were really trying to make sure that you were spending the right amount of money in the right areas at the right time, because otherwise you couldn't have spending hundreds, if not millions of dollars in the wrong space. And so it was very important to have access to real-time information. So that's really what birthed Apache Druid. With that comes several features that make Apache Druid specifically geared towards being a real-time DB. First, it has what they like to call an optimized data format. Now, part of this just has to do with how they're storing the data. In particular, they have several levels of indexes that they apply to the data that is stored in a columnarized fashion. These indexes include time index, dictionary encoded, and bitmap indexed. On top of that, of course, it's type compressed, like you'll often find with most columnar databases. But generally, the major benefit that gives you the ability to query the data quickly is the varying types of indexes. It also has an interactive query engine that uses a scatter and gather approach in terms of how it actually manages its queries, which essentially means it sends out a ton of messages and then re-aggregates that information, usually stored in a combination of both local and data that can be preloaded um, across the network. So that way it's just faster. Its architecture is also loosely coupled, meaning essentially it has varying components and nodes that allow it to essentially be as elastic as you need it to be. If you need to scale it up, scale it down, you can kind of increase and decrease very quickly by again, either increasing the nodes, increasing the varying components required, giving you this ability to kind of plug and play in terms of like where you need to actually speed things up. On top of that, it provides true streaming ingestion. You know, some systems have to kind of use some sort of method kind of fake a stream approach, but the way Druid has been developed is to essentially sit on top of real-time systems, whether it's Kafka, Postgres, and just pull in that data immediately as it is coming in. So it provides that near real-time or real-time application. Now, if we dig into Druid's architecture, we'll notice that there are several components that need to be called out. 
First of all, there are several node types. First, you'll hear about the historical node. These nodes are specifically focused on serving queries on historical data. In particular, your data might be stored somewhere like S3 or HDFS and needs to get pulled, and that is generally where historical nodes will come in. Broker nodes will generally handle incoming queries by routing them to the appropriate other nodes, essentially it's the one that gives the directions. Coordinator nodes manage the data distribution and balancing across historical nodes, so Again, historical nodes are doing the work and the balancing of that work is being done essentially by the coordinator node and the middle manager uh, handles the data ingestion in real time query. So any data that's just coming in or being ingested is in said node. And so that's kind of your key architecture. You can look at this image just to get a better idea. From there, you kind of have to have a decent understanding of the data storage components of which there are several um, in particular, there's segments which is basically Druid's fundamental storage unit. Like sometimes you'll hear varying systems have their own form of how they store data. Segments is kind of the way that Druid stores theirs. And essentially it's stored in an optimized columnar format, which allows for fast aggregation. And once those data segments become essentially immutable, so you can't change them, they are then stored in what is they're calling deep storage. So something like S3 or HDFS or something similar. And again, that's why you have historical nodes and also your middle manager nodes. And again, what you can end up doing in order to kind of increase or decrease how fast and how much data can be processed or how many queries can come in is you can kind of increase or decrease these specific types of nodes that are in existence. And that's what gives it this ability to be elastic is varying components can be spun up or spun down as required. So what makes Druid great for real-time analytics and in particular, real-time applications? Well, there's actually a ton of examples that'll kind of pop up here in terms of actual companies using Druid, including Reddit and Netflix, for both using Druid for many of its benefits. In particular, again, Druid has this benefit that provides the ability to handle high amounts of queries per second, where other solutions might require you to have multiple, essentially, warehouses set up. Druid can let you spin up new nodes to handle your incoming new queries. For example, as Reddit's advertising business has grown considerably recently, they needed a new solution to give advertisers insights into how users engage with their ads, which meant they not only had to provide this information in near real time, but also meant they were required to query billions of rows of data. Their old reporting system essentially required them to take their varying events that were written to Kafka, have some sort of Spark job that evaluated these events and put them into S3 and Parquet files, and then they'd have the aggregated data in Redis essentially serve up on a UI the information that was being requested. The problem was that Redis uh, has limitations in terms of it not being really built for aggregation and doing complex queries, as well as memory usage issues and just general flexibility to new requirements being an issue. So they ended up switching to Druid, which in turn allowed them to essentially still sit on top of S3 and provide this information to their end users quickly, which helped reduce their overall query latency and improved availability from 99.5% to consistent 99.9%. Again, making sure that their end users were being satisfied. They're not having this constant problem of, you know, they're putting out queries, they're not coming back in time. You need to be able to support your end users when they're trying to query information, whether that's, you know, building an application in real time, like essentially Reddit was doing, or you're just trying to build an internal solution and give real-time information to, let's say, operators in a factory. Other use cases can include things like behavioral analysis of customers who are possibly going through uh, essentially your systems. Uh, Netflix has a few things for A-B testing where they're using Druid. And there's just layers upon layers where Druid can come in quite handy, especially when you just want to sit on top of things like Kafka, MongoDB, without ingesting it straight into a data warehouse because you have other use cases that are required immediately and you don't have time to wait for a batch process. Now, let's be clear. No system is perfect. Druid is in no way a replacement for a data warehouse. I think there are specific use cases for data warehouses and Druid, again, does an amazing job at being a real-time database. It provides the ability to build real-time applications on top of it. It handles high queries per second, but it's generally not a one-for-one -one replacement for your data warehouse. And honestly, for most people and many of the companies I've worked with who are using Druid, they're using it as a complementary point to their data warehouse. Maybe they're having a real-time uh, application that they developed, but they still need to maybe further integrate to other data sets that are maybe either smaller or maybe require a lot more pre-processing in their data warehouse, but they still need to answer questions I mean, in real time or give their end users access to data 
in some form of application. Another point to make is that Druid, although it's made great strides in making itself easier to set up recently, does have a lot of components. And it does have a lot of different ways you can configure it. Similar to the way that I've talked about Airflow, you do require some expertise to set it up. You get, you've got all these different nodes, you've got all these different components, and yes, there are uh, ways that you can start it easily. Um, I'll probably pop up a few examples of people who've essentially created starter kits that you can launch easily. It's still fair to say that compared to maybe using an out of the box solution, it is slightly more complex. But I will say that the Druid team is constantly making efforts and strides that are making it significantly easier than it was essentially about 10 years ago to set it up yourself. So don't let it discourage you. I think it's still worth setting up. With that, I'd recommend you try getting started out with Druid. With that, if you want to get started with Druid, another great thing is because they have such a great community, because they are one that is well supported and has been around for a while and is used by several large companies, they have tons in terms of official documentation that you can go check out, as well as tutorials and videos that they have put time into putting together for you so that you are encouraged to use it. So you can put together your first example projects, whether that's sitting on top of some financial data like stock information to build a real-time app or providing some sort of customer analysis, maybe on some fake data that you found, you can actually set it up yourself and then maybe sit something on top of it like your favorite dashboarding solution, to kind of show off what you're doing. Now that you know a little bit more about Druid, where it came from, the fact that again, it's been driven by ad tech and that many companies still rely on it today because it really does handle scale in real time well. And the fact that if you are looking for a real time DB that is calmerized, has all the indexes pre-built into it, Druid is a great place to start. Druid is a reliable solution that has a lot of support around it. So if you're looking for a real time database, feel free to check out Druid. Uh, below. I'll put a link to it. Other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully you now understand a little bit more about what Druid is. With that, guys, I want to say thanks y'all and goodbye.